The Biden administration announced yesterday it would send over $300 million in aid to Afghanistan in response to the country's, quote, growing humanitarian needs exacerbated by COVID-19 and healthcare shortages, drought, malnutrition, and the winter season. This comes as a new report from the Washington Post further sheds light on the horrific extent to which Afghan people are struggling to feed their families. Aid groups claim that 23 million of the 39 million people in the country don't have enough to eat. In her reporting, Washington Post foreign correspondent Pamela Constable writes, quote, the country's new rulers cut off from most international aid as well as Afghan government assets held in U.S. accounts have scant resources to protect millions of vulnerable people against another harsh winter. Many Afghans were living a meager existence before the Taliban's takeover, but others are part of a large, newly impoverished urban working class that mushroomed after the sudden collapse of the vast foreign funded war and aid economy. And we're grateful to have Pamela with us now to expand on our reporting. Welcome to Rising, Pamela. So one uh, quick question is, first of all, this aid that the Biden administration says they're sending over, is this aid money that's actually the Afghan money that we're holding hostage? Uh, and where at, who are they sending the money to? Are they going to give it to the Taliban? Are they, are they giving it to humanitarian aid groups? Do we know what their plan is? Yes, in fact, um, there was a big conference about that here today in Kabul with um, representatives of most of the international aid agencies. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of detailed discussion about not only what the Biden administration is giving, but this much larger amount that is starting to, um, to really pour into the country. Um, as you may know, the UN made a huge appeal yesterday for more than $4 billion um, to help Afghanistan. So lots of interest and, and lots of expected aid coming in. To answer your question, um, there are sort of special rules that have put into effect or special arrangements that have put into, been put into effect to allow, um, uh, for example, the, the US administration to send aid money to Afghanistan without having it touch the hands of the Taliban regime. Um, it's going to World Food Program, to UN uh, Refugee Commission, uh, to um, a, a number of different international agencies that are in place with foreign uh, administration in Afghanistan, uh, distributing aid all over the country as we speak. Um, and they're the ones that have been begging for help. Um, and they're the ones that have been assuring the international community that they're going to make sure the money doesn't go into the government's hands. And it's this, at this conference today for, for the donors, um, you've seen Taliban officials uh, uh, reiterated their promise um, that they would make sure it didn't, didn't fall into, uh, into, into the wrong hands. Okay, so the United States is sanctioning the Afghan government. They have seized Afghan government money. They are blocking international aid from, from getting in. But for what? What is, what is the policy goal that the U.S. has in mind here in creating all this misery, which they're now uh, modestly trying to alleviate through a, a few hundred million dollars? Um, the policy um, right now by the United States and, and much of, of, of the world um, is not to officially recognize the Taliban government, number one, which means that, that no direct aid of any kind um, is, is supposed to be coming to the government. Um, but that policy goal is complicated um, uh, by the fact that you know millions of people in Afghanistan are suffering greatly, uh, as was pointed out uh, earlier in this um, in this broadcast. Uh, and I've seen that with my own eyes. Uh, many others have seen it too. It, it's this is a very poor country. It's always been a very poor country, but it seems to have been hit with everything at once. Um, it's not just. Um, uh, 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 the American uh, and international aid being cut off. Uh, there are many other problems here. A drought, uh, there have been avalanches over the past week that have killed people. Um, they seem to sort of be hit with everything uh, at once. So, so I don't think the policy goal uh, of the United States is, is to harm Afghanistan. Certainly, I, they think there's a great uh, a great amount of sympathy and, and interest in helping, uh, but but there's also a, because there's so much 
criticism of the Taliban uh, way of life, way of viewing things, way of treating people, the policies it believes in. Um, there, there is no rush to legitimize or to recognize um, the current regime. So you could say it's a kind of a, a policy in contradiction with itself or, or in conflict, uh, um, multiple goals um, that are in conflict. All right, so Pamela, you write about the mushrooming of poverty um, in the days since the collapse, and I'm wondering if, you know, you've mentioned COVID and you talked about some of the natural disasters that have just absolutely slammed the people of Afghanistan um, in this sort of perfect storm type situation, but could you talk a little bit about how Taliban rule has contributed to the mushrooming of poverty that has taken place over the last several months? Um, the Taliban, uh, in, in terms of their actions, have not contributed to poverty. The problem is that they're, they don't really have any way to help people. They have no money, they have no liquidity, they have no access to international help. Um, we don't really know how much money they have in their possession. Um, but they are brand new. Um, they're not really a government yet. They um, Much of the intellectual capital and professional class fled the country along with many, many officials. So so they're not actively, you know, harming people in terms of of, of, of hunger and uh and, and 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 coal and all the suffering that I saw going on here in these past several weeks. Um, but partly because of the sanctions and partly because of their own lack of preparedness to suddenly become a government after 20 years of being a fighting force. Um, that has all combined with the other uh, issues that we've all, we've already mentioned to make it uh, very difficult uh, for people um, to survive, and and that other uh, issue of sort of this downscaling um, of all classes. I mean, the poor were always poor, but lots of people who weren't now have no way to get paid. Uh, there's no jobs. Uh, people don't have savings here, uh, and so lots of people are scrounging uh, who never would have been in the past. Mm. Well, P Pamela, thanks for joining us. Terrific reporting on what I think is a real crime against humanity that the U.S. is waging mm -hmm. in Afghanistan here. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Right. And we will have more Rising right after this.